What's happening everyone? Hope you're all well and uh, thank you for being patient. I know I've been a bit lazy in uh, uploading videos and I wanted to do something like this ages ago but um, I never really got around to doing it. Today I'm going to be kind of going through breaking down and reacting to my PWA heat from uh, the Pozo World Cup. Been a bit of a while now since I've had a look at these heats so I think having that time off uh, and reflection it's going to be nice to see uh, sort of with a clear head, what my thoughts were, see what I could have done better or what I didn't do so well, what I did do well. As always, I appreciate your, your thoughts. If you've got any opinions or questions, then definitely go put it down in the comments. I'll, I'll read all of them and uh, it's really nice to see everyone's comments. So keep on doing it, keeps me motivated. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna start off with um, my first heat. Uh, yeah, what about, let's, let's break it down with the conditions because we had I think this was day four of the World Cup and uh, we had the first three days pretty light wins so they did the juniors and then they did then then they started the single elimination so yeah I was in the first round of the single elimination but I was right at the end um, which is quite nice I like being sort of almost the last heat and it kind of gives me the most time to prepare and all that so um, it's always nice to have that heat right at the end and you kind of get to watch everybody to see what everybody's doing and see what's scoring and stuff. Actually, this day, surprisingly, it was pretty windy. I was on my 3.7 and uh, the kind of the, the issue we had on that day was kind of more the waves and the wind. And uh, yeah, I was out there free sailing for quite a while with uh, Miguel. We actually did like a little um, test heat on the watches just to make sure we felt comfortable and everything. And yeah, the conditions were pretty small once we were warming up. And then I think there was a little moment where the waves clicked in just as the tide was pushing up or I'm not sure, I think the tide was pushing up. And um, yeah, they got the heats going. And I think they were 18, oh no, sorry. Yeah, there were 16 minute heats, two minutes transition. So 18 in total. And I remember we're doing a practice heat. I was doing it with Miguel and I was thinking, fuck, this feels like really long. I don't think I've ever done a heat that long probably have not sure but normally they're about 12 minutes or even less for the waves and um, so 16 minutes I remember in the warm-up felt really really long so I knew I would have kind of enough time to you know pick the right waves and everything so that was nice but uh, let's kick things off yellow flag see what Ben's got to say okay last heat of the first round we've got Omar Sanchez against Lucas Meldrum uh, and then we so as you just heard from Ben, I was up against Omar Sanchez, which is, well, there's no easy heat in the PWA, as you know, but Omar Sanchez, um, yeah, it was going to be a tough opponent. He is a local boy, quite, I think he's about 30 or something, so quite a lot of experience under his belt, but still pretty young. And he's a bit of a wave trick wizard. I mean, he's got all the tricks, 360s and shakers and stuff. So I knew it was going to be hard, but at the same time, I knew if I, you know, sailed really well, I had a chance and you never know what's going to happen. I remember I wasn't feeling that nervous, to be honest. Um, I was kind of feeling pretty comfortable with the conditions, my equipment, and uh, I didn't really have anything to lose. So I was, it was my first PW event. I was like, yeah, let's just go for it. He really wanted that, didn't he? He wasn't letting yep. that thing go. There we go, Lucas with a plane in forward to kick things off. He's kind of a, like semi-celebrity walking around the beach. Yeah, so I haven't seen him on the water as much, maybe because of that. Um, I guess he's still very experienced here. Oh, but top Lucas wave for Lucas. That wave score. Oh, he's got to pull out because of the rocks. I hope that doesn't cost him the... So there yeah, you go. That was my because... first wave. I mean, my, my kind of thinking is always just to, you know, get kind of the scores down first, fill the scorecard, and then kind of build on it. So I just wanted to go out and do a decent wave. And then I started that way, I think it was, it was a backside, two backsides, into a front side, you know, fairly simple, don't do anything too crazy. And um, I felt like it could have been an okay score. I mean, as Ben said there, I pulled out at the end because I was, you can't really see on the video, but it's basically just on the rocks. Do you think that was a, a kind of completed wave? Would you count that turn at the end? Could I have ridden out and uh, should I have ridden out? This is a this is a, a question I'd, uh, I'm still a bit unsure of, so it'd be cool to hear people's opinions. 
So I've got a 3.62 3 for that wave, which is, I mean, the judging in this event, there was some questions asked, but also it's really hard for the judges to know because these weren't like proper poker conditions. So what are you basing the scores off? Are you basing it off um, like what poser's really like? Or are you basing it off today, which is or the, well, the day that we competed? So um, it's a funny one, because obviously there's people that can do like double fours off the lip, but not that, that you, like it's not possible. So how do you score it? So the next, the next thing on the bucket list, I guess you could say, was I wanted to go and do a back leap and just get that in a bag. And that first one, I, I just really forced off absolute nothing, you can see, and um, kind of didn't really make it. And I, I didn't really want to try too hard to make it because I knew that wasn't going to be a good scoring jump anyway. Lucas Meldrum just going around a little backy, not making the landing. I just thought that moment that I could really hold on and try and get that score, but what, you know, all that effort's not going to be worth anything in the end. So I just thought, come around, turn in and try again. 6 2, forward loop 4 1 2, just a one point wave ride. Oh, there you go, Lucas got his back loop. So there's my back loop, so I, I, I landed it pretty well. So then from that moment, I was pretty happy there with two jumps in the score. Um, it was yeah, two jumps, one wave. So from this moment onwards, it was just about building. I had 11 minutes left, almost 12 minutes actually. So I had a lot of time. And there you go, that was my stalled four, which I got, you, this can happen in Poza, which is amazing. Just get two jumps on one run. It's just coming at 488 for Lucas Meldrum. So put that with the stall forward. Oh, it's a tight heat. It's, it's super tight. It's One point. So yeah, this point it was pretty like pretty much neck and neck between me and Omar. I had uh, that four point something backy, and then um, that stalled forward. So I was kind of I was feeling quite good. I mean, I hadn't really crushed anything major, so it's going well. I knew I just had to build on it. Okay, so how are we looking? Lucas Meldrum getting a four oh seven for that forward, so he's extended his lead twelve five seven. It's not looking bad for him. So, as Henry said, yeah, it wasn't looking bad for me, but, I mean, there's still... This This is the kind of thing, like, the heats were so long. You could almost fit two normal heats into this one heat, so you couldn't really rely on it. And you can see here, I'm just kind of just waiting for a wave. I know, I've, you know, it's one wave, two jumps. That one wave, if you can get a really sick wave, then you're in a pretty decent position there. Lucas Meldrum trying to ride something on the inside. Same as Mike Friedel, but pulling out of that one. See, that was kind of kind of testing the waters on that wave just to see if there was anything there, but I knew it wasn't going to be a scoring wave. Uh, I had to kick out. The heat is going as well as it could for Lucas because the jumps are a bit of his, um, maybe his weaker side. He, or other, other set, his, his wave rides is what, he, what he's best at. Yeah. Um, so I think now having the time to go for waves... Um, he can definitely push something out there. Too, Henry knows me too well. I mean, yeah, I'm not... I, I do love to jump, but... Yeah, the waves is where I really like to just take it. And, uh, and this was the eight-minute mark. This was the, um, the real moment in the heat, which kind of changed everything. Um, it was me and Omar both there, um, kind of waiting for waves. Omar was just kind of, uh, so as you're sailing to Poza, it, it's a really weird setup with the ways in Poza, it's not really like anywhere else, but um, he was kind of behind me, so he almost, he basically had the priority, um, and there was a set coming, I knew he was going to take the, the set, the kind of, the wave behind it, um, so I kind of had to go for the first wave, and uh, yeah, bottom turn and the bold up, kind of pretty nice, so... Um, it was quite quite a good kind of 360 section, so I kind of had to go for it. Got around in front, landed just like a little bit of my um, board, like the, the rail of the board on one side of the water. And there was a point that I thought I had it, and you can actually see the wave kind of uh, still holding up quite well. And I think if I had been able to get up there and get another maybe backside, frontside, 
that could have been the, the real score that that could have like put me put me like in a solid lead and yeah I thought I'd made it and I possibly got a little bit overexcited and uh, yeah kind of clipped the rail and and went over so that was really annoying but the thing that made it even worse is I knew Omar had the way behind me and as I look around I see Omar just get the 360 section and land the 360 so I was like fuck that's uh that's going to be the score for Omar and that's going to really kind of hinder my like possibilities of me going through. Able forward so in there. The moment. Like, Lucas just going down. Fell yeah. off the back of that. But like last year when we were filming, um, like we did like, we were together with Lauwin. Oh, oh 360 three. from Omar Sanchez. So Omar Sanchez. And is way, the wave left. Maybe he can do something. Uh, yeah, he's back in the game right now. Three, that is for sure. Three. We're going to see more on this as well. Maybe attacker to finish uh, things off. Up. It, Attackers coming up into the beach. Watch them fins. And there we go. That is about as good a wave rider as we've seen in terms of moves. I'm calling that's the best wave we've seen so far. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, wave 360 into Shaka into kind of a turn. Um, yeah, Henry said they're probably the best wave we've seen all day in terms of um, kind of manoeuvres and linking the turns. So was pretty unlucky there that my opponent in the whole of the first round probably got one of the one of the better waves. That's close to one of the some of the big boys. Yeah, uh, he loves a turn. Oh, one handed. One handed lander. One -handed. Yes, all right, okay. So there you go. Then I had my one hand back loop, which uh, kind of got me feeling a bit more confident again. Landed all the way off. I thought that would be a pretty decent score. Like I didn't really see really many people doing that um, and I was hoping the judges were going to score well for that it wasn't it was the landing wasn't perfect perfect uh, but it wasn't bad either I was kind of confident that would be a good score and I don't think they scored that well for it uh, I don't really know why okay go on the Brits solo 5.5 for Omar Sanchez and um so yeah, Omar Sanchez is going to 5.5 for his wave. I think it sounds about right, to be honest. Um, like, when you think about someone, oh, they did a 360 shack and a turn, you're like, fucking hell, that's a good wave. But um, you've got to look at it as, you know, you can't just look at it as a turn. You know, there's a turn and a turn, you know. So that 360 wasn't like a proper sick 360, you're going to jump out your seat. Um, and the shaka was nothing too critical, and then the turn on the end wasn't anything out of this world. So 5.5 is kind of like just above average. So I think it's a, it's a fair score. I Pretty critical say. if it's a white water 360. So, but 5.5 is still a decent score on the wave. They have been scoring more turns than yeah. tricks at the I moment. Mean, we had, uh, and that's another point that Ben said. Like the turns, I think as well. Like in Pozo, they're harder to do. Like a sick turn, you don't really see that many. So I think they should be scoring a good turn better than wave tricks. Is there's a lot of times when you're going up to that wave and it's almost easier to kind of go into the 360 than to do a turn because it's so unsure. So I was pretty happy with the one hand back loop. I knew I could do a better stalled forward, um, but I was also thinking should I do a table forward because they were also scoring pretty well. So uh, yeah, it's kind of a bit mixed in my head of what to do next. Give him the kiss of death on the end. Yeah. Lucas Meldrum. Oh, I think you got a bit stuck on the takeoff there and had to, he'd already committed. You got some height though. Yeah. And then here we go, that was the weird stool table forward that um, I was caught in two minds of what to do there. And uh, at the end, it wasn't either one of them and it wasn't that good. So I, was, I think that's something that I knew or I know now that I could do better. Like I could have got a good stool forward score or a table forward score. And uh, I, I didn't do that because I was stuck in two minds. If judges see that, it's going to be a good score, as well as that <laughs> tweet push loop from Omar Sanchez. So you go, Omar getting like another push tweak, and 
I think this is where you kind of start to see the differences a bit, to be honest. Like now, after seeing it, I'm like, I mean, yeah, he was better. He was going higher. And um, if you're going to go higher, then you're going to get more points at the end of the day. Came forward, so that's a high score. Luke is now going down the waves. Is that going to better his situation? I mean, that was a powerful front side turn, but I think he needs more to better that score. Oh, See, so yeah, another kind of meh, another kind of meh wave, I would say, like falling in again. Um, and this was two minutes to go, so I kind of gone from having almost 10 minutes to really improve my scores, and I pretty much threw all that way by just not really picking the right ways and not really doing the right stuff. I have to say, this is something that I forgot about, but now I remembered. I had a, a watch I borrowed and had it all set up as I did. We did like the heat before and everything. It all seemed to work well. And then during the heat, it just like gone, or I'd pressed something by accident. I don't know, but it'd gone wrong. So I was pretty much there having no idea how much time I had left, which I don't know. I know some people don't actually use watches, but for me, I quite like to know how much time I've got just so I can calculate um, if I need to kind of get a move on or if I can relax and take a bit more time on things. So that kind of, I guess, affected it a little bit, I would say. Because he's, he's, put something he's off. still sailing. Nice deep bomb turn from Lucas. How's that for a turn? He's doing some sick turns, I have to say. Yep. I might be a bit biased because I'm British, but did you see the spray? Come on, son. Oh, just missing the end of his wave there. But. Yeah, you see, I, I, I was, pre I'm pretty happy looking at that now. I think in terms of the flow, like I did my first turn, and that's like how I think, I think those kind of turns should be scored, scored well. Like really committing to the bottom turn and the top turn. I think a lot of people, especially in Pozo, like almost like forget. Um, that bottom turn is part of the wave ride and I'd really like to see like the judges I mean obviously they, they do but like to have a real uh, impact on the complete wave because I think you can do a sick top turn without having to do a sick bottom turn but to do a, a sick bottom turn a kind of a lot of power aggression into a, a really kind of aggressive top turn is harder so I think it should be kind of rewarded I mean, we've got the kind of advantage with windsurfing rather than surfing where we can kind of just like pivot on the tail and then still keep speed. But I think it's it just um, in terms of like aesthetically pleasing, I think to do a real kind of deep carve into a top turn looks better, it's harder to do, so I think therefore should be rewarded more. So I'm looking at back, back at it now, I'm pretty happy with um, that turn I did, to be honest. And then flowing straight into that. And then, in my opinion, doing this kind of shove it, um, like shove it air, which like, it's almost, I think, probably at the same level as like a whitewater tackle where, you know, it's not, that alone is not gonna score the points, but then there's still a level to it. Like, if you do it off a huge section and then it's gonna, the lip's gonna throw you forward, then I think it can score quite well. And I know that wasn't a massive section, but it wasn't, for me, looking at that now, I think that was like pretty critical in terms of in the section, there was a bit of risk rather than me doing it on the shoulder of a wave. Lucas might need to up some of his jump scores. What? He's looking back to me, what do I need? And they're like, yeah. oh, a really big wave. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that, I mean, I was looking back and trying to find out how much time I had, to be honest because my watch was all wrong. I didn't know if I had like 20 seconds left, a minute left. Um, I had no idea, so that's what I was trying to find out from the beach. Well, oh, that's the thing, like he's asking what do I need, and, and the issue is... It's isn't it? You need two things. Oh, he did better his waist score. Oh, you did, yeah. That it's, makes sense. It's still not an after. 488. Like, that's so that's a 488. 488. Omar's wave was 5.5. Let me know in the comments. Um, what, how you think that should have ranked compared to Omar's wave. Omar's wave, uh, technical, technical moves, I would say. Um, 
not in none of them were in critical sections. Um, my wave, kind of basic, just turns. Um, but I believe they were probably as much as I could have done on that wave. So, give me your opinion. Should it be the same? Should it be less? Um, or do you think the judges have done it just right there? I think I could have got may maybe like a five uh, on that wave at least. When you have, when you're missing a couple of points on every score um, with 40 seconds to go, it, it's nearly impossible to do something unless you can pull off a double or something like that. Yeah. I've seen him pull off a couple doubles, but it's not his favorite move. Yeah. Um, I, I, def I, I mean, at this moment, I knew I was definitely not thinking about doubles. But, to be honest, if someone had said, go and do a double, it's your only chance, maybe I would have pulled it. But I wasn't thinking about it at the time, I know that. So he needs to up his jump score, and he's not going to do it. It will be Omar Sanchez in the next round. And it looks like Mike Friedel has put a pretty solid heat together himself with that 4-8-8, table Unless forward. Is on a wave. So, there you go, that's my first heat. Came into the beach, happy with how I sailed. Looking back now, I think it's pretty good. Like, could have done better, could have gone a bit higher. Um, could have landed at 360, which um, might have put me more in contention. It could have been a lot closer. But at the same time, it was my first event, my first heat. I didn't embarrass myself, which was a plus. So, yeah, pretty, I'll, yeah I'll take that, I'll take that for sure.